talk about uh, uh, what BI is all about, uh, various uh, uh, reasons for implementing BI in organizations, so what, what is the underlying architecture, so on and so forth. In the second webcast, we I showed you a demonstration of how to create a queue. Uh, this webcast was uh, delivered uh, day before yesterday, that was on Monday. And I showed you uh, creating a mini data warehouse from Northwind. Then we used the Business Intelligence Development Studio uh, to create the queue. Then we deployed the queue and we browsed the queue using uh, Excel 2007. And in the third webcast, the one that we are doing today, I am going to talk about extracting data from queue. So let's proceed. I hope uh, all of you can hear me. Uh, please, uh, mark, uh, please give me feedback using green from the feedback option if you can hear me. And those who cannot hear me, uh, please um, put the feedback as either red or uh, please put it as red if you need help. Okay. Uh, Rafiq, uh, you, if you cannot hear me, uh, Amit Kamir will be able to assist you. All right, so um, just a quick introduction uh, about me. I am basically a corporate trainer and consultant on SQL Server and Business Intelligence. I have delivered more than 200 workshops and have trained about 3,000 IT professionals on SQL Server. Uh, I'm also Microsoft's most valuable professional on the YouTube server and have about 12 years of experience. I work as a BI practitioner uh, with a couple of IT and non-IT companies. I had the privilege of speaking at global conferences like uh, Tech at US, Tech at Europe and Tech at uh, India. I also work very closely with Microsoft in India and I work as a subject matter expert with them. Uh, I also participate in OD sessions, I do content development for them and I speak at various Microsoft MSDN and TechNet sessions. I have been an MCT and one of the first MCTs in India since 2002 and also a member of Microsoft Certified Trainer Advisory Council. So that was about me. Um, I'm privileged to be working with a couple of large IT and non-IT companies in India and most of the large CMM level 5 companies have been my clients. So the agenda for today's work workshop is very straightforward. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques uh, to extract data from uh, the queue. So what are the different ways of uh, extracting data from the queue? In the previous webcast, we saw how to create a queue. We created the queue, we deployed it, and today I'm going to show you how you can use various uh, tools to extract data from the queue. Then we will have a follow-up session and, uh, and Q&A. <coughs> So what are we going to do today? I am going to discuss BI clients like Excel uh, to uh, show you how you can browse data uh, from Excel. Uh, Pro Clarity is another tool from Microsoft which can be used to browse the queue. However, I am not going to demonstrate Pro Clarity today. Probably I will post uh, another dedicated session for Pro Clarity. I am going to show you SQL Server Reporting Services, how to create a report and how to display the few multi-dimensional data using, using a report. I'll go uh, a little bit, uh, uh, I'll give you a little bit of demonstration of how to use MDX script to extract data from the queue. So we'll, we'll learn a little bit of MDX scripting also today. There's another way of uh, extracting data that is using ADO MD Carpet which is uh, a programmatic way of uh, extracting data from the queue. However, I will not show you a demo of ADOMD.net. So to start with, Excel 2007. Now Excel, uh, I have not come across anyone who has never used Excel. So Excel is uh, one of the largest um, is, uh, spreadsheet tool that has been used. Uh, there is no financial services company that does not use Excel. It's the world's most popular spreadsheet tool as well as the world's most popular BI client. When I mean a BI client, Excel is a BI client because it can consume multi-dimensional data. You can use Excel to browse the queue. You could use Excel to uh, uh, 97, you could use Excel 2003, and I'm going to demonstrate Excel 2007 for you. 
there have there have been a couple of uh, enhancements in Excel 2007. Uh, uh, apart from uh, what are the different tools that Excel has? Ex with, the, with Excel, you have pivot tables that can be used to browse data. You can have pivot charts. You can do conditional formatting of data. You have data mining uh, extensions and data mining add-ins. Uh, with the help of which, you can run data mining queries. Excel 2007 also has the capability to uh, browse uh, KPIs. So this was not available in uh, in SQL Server uh, in uh, sorry in Excel 2003. But in 2007, you can also view key performance indicators that uh, that you create in queues. So let me start with an, uh, a demo of uh, Excel. So I hope all of you can see Excel. And this was something that I showed you uh, last time also. But I'm going to show you a couple of new things now, uh, not typically just browsing the data. So uh, how do we browse the queues? The first thing that I will do in Excel is I go to the data tab in Excel. And I, will, I want to connect to my source. I want to connect to my queue. The queue is already deployed in SQL Server 2008 Analysis Services instance. I will click on from other sources and I have the second option from analysis services. I click on analysis services. I have to supply the server name. So this is the this is the instance that has analysis services uh, running. I am going to use Windows authentication. I move next. And if if you have attended my first, uh, the webcast on Monday, creating a cube, you would remember that we created a cube, uh, a database by the name of NW Sample. This is the OLAP database, and it has a cube by the name of cube underscore dot I am going to select this cube, um, have the default settings here, and finish. Uh, this dialog box is basically asking me to overwrite the connection file that I already have. So I will say yes. And I will connect. So what you see in front of you is now is the pivot table on the left hand side, and on the right hand side you see a pivot table field list. So pivot table field list basically has all the dimensions and measures that is available in the queue. And uh, if you remember, we had this total sales measure. So let's start browsing. I first want to see the total sales, and I will drag it into values. Or there's another way. So you can see total sales uh, figure comes up there, or I can just simply select. If I click on check, it will automatically put it into values. I want to see all the, I want to slice and dice this sales figure by uh, employee, so I will put that into employee. I also want to see uh, uh, sales figure of employee time wise, so I also want to use this definition time, and I can take calendar and put it into my column. And thus, I can see sales figure of each employee, uh, what they have been selling in the year 96, 97, 98. This was something that I showed you uh, on Monday also. Now, this is one of the ways of extracting data from the queue. And this is uh, Excel, as I said, is one of the most popular tools to extract data. There are a couple more things that you can, you should, you would be able to do here now. Let me show you some functionalities of Excel that will help uh, this uh, interactive analysis of data more visualized and more appealing. Uh, what I mean by this is, let me go to sheet two, and I will use the formula bar, and let me show you a technique here. So if I put a function called rank between, that is, I'll, I'll choose a random number between 100 and 200, 
presenter. So on this, um, in this cell, I have a random number between 100 and 200. I drag the uh, the box and populate a couple of other uh, cells, and I have a, I have a set of random numbers from between 100 and 200. Now what I'm going to do is uh, on the toolbar you see there is a section here called conditional formatting. I will select conditional formatting and there is an option of data bars, color scales and I can set. For example, I take a data bar and I will mark it as red. Okay, uh, just a minute. I will select all the cells and go to data bar mark as red. Now what you can see is with the help of this conditional formatting I get a visual indicator. 193 is very close to 200, so you know the cell is mostly filled with the red color. On the other hand, if you see 106, which is very low, and you you get a visual indicator as to a, a value that is higher and values that are lower. But now, if I press F9, I'm pressing F9 to recalculate my random uh, numbers, and you can see that it keeps changing. So basically this is a conditional formatting technique that can be used with pivot tables also and the enhancement in 2008 uh, in Excel 2007 is as follows. I will now apply this technique to my pivot table. So I will go back to sheet 1 and in sheet 1 I have a couple of numerical figures here and I want to apply the same conditional formatting technique so that I get a visual indicator uh, of my data and I go to conditional formatting, I go to uh, data bars and I take a uh, red color. Now you will see there is an option here. Uh, it gives me selected cells and there is a second option which says all cells showing total sales. So I just don't want this conditional formatting technique to apply to only one cell. I want this technique to be applied to all the cells that show total sales values. And I will set this and now you can see that if I keep my data expanding, I I get figures. And the, the, the greatest thing here is even if I expand and collapse my pivot table, my conditional formatting does not go away. This was a problem in, uh, in Excel 2003. In Excel 2003, if you apply conditional formatting, it did not stick with the pivot table region. It did not stick with the pivot table area. Now if I expand, or collapse my pivot table, my conditional formatting will stay with it and I don't need to uh, bother about uh, uh, modifying my uh, conditional formatting again and again. So this is a very good technique here. Couple of other things that I uh, that I showed and I will just show it if I want to create a chart out of this very quickly I can do that using pivot table tools. I can go to pivot table tools and there is a chart uh, option here to chart and I can select this and I can just select the type of chart that I want. I have a lot of options here. Uh, I can have any type of visual appealing chart. So I can take a pie chart for example and it gives me a figure employee wise right for the year 1996. Right because uh, pivot table, uh, table uh, a pie chart can only show me two uh, components that uh, it is showing me this year's figure and showing me only one year. If I want other years also, then I will probably have to change the chart type. And I can always uh, move this chart to a, a new sheet or I can put it into the same sheet. I can always go and change the chart layout. So there are a couple of options of you know how you would want to format the chart and whichever color schemes you want. You can change the chart layout. Okay. You can always go to the pivot chart option and change your chart type to something else. And suppose I take up, um, I take up a, a 3D uh, cylindrical bar column chart, and then I get this, and I can again change the chart type to something better to suit my requirement. Right? And in this chart, you can clearly see that I am seeing the sales figure of of my employees as well as different, the performance in different years, right? So uh, this was something that I, I, I had been showing on and off in my other demos, uh, pretty straightforward, pretty quick. So let me go back to my uh, presentation now and we will see how we can extract data from 
using the next technique. So the next technique that I am going to use is SQL Server Reporting Services. Okay, uh, Raghura had a question. Uh, it, uh, KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator. Okay, so I'll move. Uh, I'm not going to answer questions as of now. Let me move with the presentation. I'll take questions at the end. So, using SQL Server reporting services, you can connect to an analysis services instance, supply your parameters, and connect data uh, and retrieve data from the queue. The tool that we are going to use is Report Designer. Report Designer is a, is a designer tool that is built into Business Intelligence Development Studio. A couple of things that you need to understand before you start building Report Designer is the first thing is the data source. Many of you already know we will use the data source file that will allow us to connect the designer to the analysis services instance. Then we have to create a something called as a data set. A data set is nothing but like a record set where we will put in our query and we will retrieve data from the queue. Now this is interesting. When, whenever we talk about a data set or a record set, immediately what comes to our mind is writing a T-SQL query, writing a select statement. Now mind you, we are retrieving data from the queue. So in the queue, uh, when we retrieve data from the queue, you cannot write these SQL statements because it's not relational source. Queue has multi-dimensional data, and it's not a table; it's a queue. So the data is stored differently than a table. In the table, the data is stored in rows and columns. In queue, it is stored in on x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, and there could be a couple of dimensions. So, so yes, we are not going to use T-SQL. We could use MDX or we can use a query builder to create our data sets. I will show you it in the demo. And after we create a data set, we need to add uh, the necessary reports that, that will be there, uh, there in the BI Development Studio. So depending on what how many reports we want to prepare, we need to add those many reports. Reports will have your uh, components like tables, matrix, charts, gauges, um, and everything. So it's the surface, report is the surface where you can design header, footer, detail area, so on and so forth. Okay, so I will start with uh, a quick demo on SQL Server reporting services. Right. So I uh, now before, uh, in order to show you a demo on SSRS, the first thing that we will do in Business Intelligence Development should is create a project. And in the project, the Business Intelligence project, I'm going to create a report server project, and I will put it as SSRS underscore Q. Okay. And this is the name of the project, and I'm creating a report server project. There, there are a couple of more options. You can see there's a report server project wizard. There is a report uh, model project, which is basically to create a report model. This basically will start a wizard, but we don't want to work with them. We just want to create a report server project. Okay. Right. Now we have uh, the project uh, with us. You can see there are only two folders. One is shared data source, and the other is reports. So the first step in extracting data from the queue, or in in a in a normal uh, SSRS project, you will first want to create a source, which will allow you to connect to the queue. I right click on shared data source, left click on 
add the new data source, give it a meaningful name. So I give it as data source underscore not win. In type, this is this is one of the most important options here. So in type, I'm not going to select Microsoft SQL Server. Microsoft SQL Server here means that I am uh, connecting to uh, the database engine, but I want to connect to Microsoft SQL Server analysis services, right? I need to specify my connection string. When I click on edit, my server name is uh, my analysis services instance is SQL 2K8 INSC1. I'm going to select my OLAP database. My OLAP database is NW underscore sample. I have a couple of more databases. This is the one that I'm going to use. Click on test connection to test succeeded. Click on OK. And this is the place where you get the connection string. Credentials. Analysis services only works with uh, Windows authentication. So if you go to credentials, you will see Windows authentication is automatically selected. Click on OK. And what you have now is, is a data source. Now, my data source is ready. Before I uh, start browsing the cube, I need to first create a report. Now, many of you must be wondering, where is the data set? Well, we let us first add a report, and then we can add a data set, because the data set is exclusive to a report. So I, I'm going to right-click uh, report, and you will see two options. The first option says add new report, and the second option is add new item, and then I can select a report. The reason why I'm focusing on these two options is because if you right click on report and click on add new report, you will see a wizard starts where you can move next and supply the source and the data set, but I don't want to go via a wizard because with wizard I will have limited options. I will rather right click, add new item, select a report, give it a name, uh, for example, um, Northwind U sample, or whatever you feel like, add. Now, in, in SQL Server reporting services, um, just to let you know a little bit of basics here, this is the report surface and you're right now you're in the design mode. This is the place where you will drag and drop your controls like tables, charts, gauges, so on and so forth. Next to the design, there is another tab called preview. This is the tab where you will preview your report. So right now, you know, you can't see anything because nothing has been uh, created. And you see a report uh, toolbar where from where you can actually export your reports to, you know, multiple different file formats like there's XML, Excel, Word, so on and so forth. I go back to the design section and you will see on the left pane I have three more tabs here at the bottom. One is the variable tab, another is the report data set tab, and another is the toolbox tab. In the toolbox tab, you will have these components that can be dropped on the report. So that can be used in the report like a text box line and very commonly used tables, matrix, and even charts and sub-reports. And SQL Server 2008 have wonderful uh, uh, reporting capabilities, visualizations using gauge. So for example, if I click on a gauge and I drag and drop, you will see you get various uh, options for gauges. And similarly, if I try to drag and drop a chart, you will get a number of options for charts something very similar to what we saw in, in Excel, right? However, before we can start using these components, we first need to create a report data set. Sometimes when you start Business Intelligence Studio, you know this, uh, this, um, this window, report data, is not available to you. So if I close it, you know, how can you activate this window again? All you need to go is uh, do is go to view. And in view, you will have, at the last, you'll see there's something called report data. Uh, the reason why I tell you this is because sometimes I, I get questions from users that they're not able to see the report data window and they try to go to the window, try to find where it is, but uh, fortunately or unfortunately it's under the view menu in report data. Okay, so you right now you cannot see any report uh, data. I'm going to click on the new tab and I already have a data source which we created in the previous step. I am going to create a data set. 
So I click on the data set, give it a name. Data set in WQ. Now this data set is asking me a data source. So basically it is asking me which data source am I going to use to extract uh, the cube data. And surprisingly, I don't have the data source listed, the one that I created in the previous step. This is uh, this is a little funny because you already created a data source in the previous step. So what's the problem? The problem is the problem is your the data source that you have created, which you can see in Solution Explorer, is a shared data source, right? A shared data source is a data source that can be shared across multiple reports. What what this means is I actually have to go and create a private data source. So if I click on data source here, I give it a meaningful name like um, NW or whatever DS NW sample and it's not that I'm creating this data source again. I can select use share data source reference and I can use this reference the one that I created. So this is a shared data source. Now what happens is that the technique, the reason why it is implemented in this way is any number of private data sources, if they have a reference to the shared data source, and if you change the shared data source, all the data sources that have reference to the shared data source will change automatically. So it's nothing, it's simply like a reference pointer. So I'm not I'm not creating a new connection by selecting analysis services and going to edit that. I'm not doing that. I'm not creating a new data source. I'm simply pointing this data source to the shared data source. If you don't want to do this, you can always go and just create an exclusive dedicated data source for your for this report, uh, whichever is convenient and whichever uh, fulfills your requirement, you can go that way. So we we do this. We click on OK. Now my uh, my data source is uh, ready. I can now go and create a data set. And when I create a data data set, I can give it a name: ds underscore mockfield underscore sample. And the data set, data source that I have now, now I can see the data source that I uh, created. Now this is the most interesting part. You are browsing a cube, mind you. You are not writing SQL statements. Uh, you are not browsing a table with rows and columns. So things will be a little different now. You, there is no place where you can actually write uh, your own query. You have to go to the query designer, and it will open up the cube. So I click on query designer. Now, when you can see uh, all the measures and dimensions have opened up from the queue, and now you can pick and choose the uh, the data items that you want to see. And if you remember, I said basically in the background, what is going to happen is MDX scripts will automatically be created. So uh, you can go, you can write MD script on your own, but I'm not going to do that now uh, because I want to also show you how to write MD script in the next demo. So what I'm going to do is the data that I want to browse, I click. So if I go to measures, the numerical data that I want to browse is total sales. I will take it, click, drag onto the details field here. So you can see, I can see the total sales. Next. I want to see the same total sales uh, slice and dice with the uh, by employee different employees. So I can take employee name and drag it before total sales. And now many of you are uh, uh, understanding that we are slicing and dicing with exactly in the same manner as we did in in, in Excel. Uh, things are slightly different here because uh, here you will not have uh, any facility to expand or collapse. All that you are seeing is uh, the data that you want to browse. You can just simply drag and drop. And in MD script is being formed automatically in the backup. This is very similar to the query builder that we have in SQL Server, where you choose the columns of the tables that you want to browse. And these SQL scripts with, uh, with joins uh, are automatically created in the background. It's the same technique. Next, I want to see the sales figure, uh, probably. Calendar-wise, 
and this is what you get. And now you can see the, the listing. You can see all the, the data, but as you see, there's no facility where it's kind of collapsed. You have repetition, right? 96 is being repeated, quarters are repeated, months and individual days. If you want, you can also apply filter. So I can I can also filter uh, with this data that is there. If I want um, product uh, product name equals to a particular product like, for example, in chai. Wow, they have an Indian product. Click on OK. And if I click now, now you can see the data has become relatively very small because I have applied filtering. I'm only seeing same figure of all the employees for all the years where product is chai. So this is how you can uh, you can filter. And if you want, you can dismiss the filter. So just go on, click on the cross button, delete, and you can dismiss the filter. This is how it works. Now, once you have drag and drop your uh, stuff, uh, you can see the uh, you can you can browse the data here. Now, uh, there's another thing that I want to show you. This is being done in design mode. You can see this is a design mode. There's a small icon there. If you click on this icon, you can see the MGX script that is being generated in the background, right? You can see a new script that is being generated in the background. And like I clicked on the execute query here so you can see all the data. So it's up to you. You may you may even see the data here. You may uh, go back to the design mode and design it for what you want. So very, very intuitive, very intuitive. Right, once you're through with this, designing, click on OK. Click on OK. A couple of more options, but uh, we will not go into them. And now your data set has those fields that you selected. So it has employee name, it has year, quarter, month, order date from the calendar dimension, and the measures for the field. Now, now you want to prepare a report. Uh, so the report is already uh, there. You need to define it now. The first thing that I will do is go to toolbox, and um, probably I'm trying to create a matrix report. Matrix. I drag and drop a matrix, and matrix has rows, columns, and the data field here. Very intuitive again and very straightforward. You know that uh, total sales is the numerical figure that you want to analyze, so drag and drop total sales into, into the data portion here, into the data field. Okay, and you can see an aggregation automatically comes there. So sum of total sales, so this is uh, an aggregate function of sum. Some is already being used. Now you want um, you want to browse this data employee wise, right? So you will take employee name and put it in rows, right? And you also have column. Uh, and okay, let, let's quickly view this. If I view this, you can see all the employees and you can see their total sales of each and each employee. I go back to the design mode and I can take um, here and put it into columns and view it. Right now, what you will see, what you will see that. Uh, Okay, I took the time. I will just do it again. I took year from the data set and put it in the, into the columns, and you will see in my columns I have year. So I will just uh, remove this. Okay. So I what I have done is I have done a row grouping on employee name and I have done a column grouping on year. So now, if I review the results, I can see total sales of each employee year-wise, right? This is the this is the grouping that I've done. I can further group. I can take quarter and drag it and put it below year one. Now I have grouping uh, on year-wise and I have quarter-wise. And if you browse, 
you, you will see the sales figure of all employees on every year and every quarter. So once you are through with your report designing and if, if the output is correct the way you want it, uh, you can you can do a whole lot of other things. You can create link reports, sub reports. You can format it the way you want. So what I will do is uh, quickly deploy this report. So the, the first step in deploying the report is you need to right click uh, on the report project, go to properties. And in the properties, um, the field that says target server URL, this is the place where you will deploy your report. So I'm not going into the report uh, reporting services infrastructure where you need to know the uh, you know what is the report manager, you know what the reporting service is. But to quickly let you know what this means is because in order to view this report via the browser, you need to have reporting services installed. And target server URL is basically the name of the server where reporting services is installed. And in my PC, uh, I have this in uh, in my local host. So I will just quickly take out the URL. You can retrieve uh, you can retrieve uh, this information from reporting services configuration uh, manager in SQL Server program menu. Just give me a second, I'm just opening it up and retrieving it. So this is the URL. So I have HTTP three colon. This is the name of my machine. This is the virtual directory that is being created, uh, and this is automatically key, uh, automatically created when I install reporting service. Report server underscore the name of my SQL instance. This is automatically created uh, when reporting services is installed. I click on OK. Right click my project and deploy. You will notice that uh, deployment has been successful. So if you look into the status bar of Visual Studio, you will see one report deployment succeeded, zero failed, zero skip. Now I want to browse this report. You can browse this report uh, that you have deployed using Report uh, Manager. So I will uh, I will just retrieve the URL from my report manager. I, I will switch on Internet Explorer. Let me share the Internet Explorer with you. So this is my URL, my machine name, reporting services pages folder. So I can I can just simply put this. This is the report manager URL. Uh, mind you, just to repeat again, report manager uh, URL and reporting services URL they all are automatically created when you install reporting services. Press enter. It asks me because I'm on, on a server operating system. It asks me for its password. And here is the reporting services home. And the one you created a project by the name of SSRS Cube. Click on this. You have the Northwind Cube sample. This is the report. Right? And the report is being deployed. You can export it in any format that you feel like. 
right? You can print it, you can navigate from pages to pages. This is how you view the report. So, just a quick recap, this is the data that is coming in from the cube. You have used reporting services, report designer to create a report. You created a data source, data set to connect to the cube. Great. So, I will close this. Just to uh, quickly show you, uh, uh, there are a lot of capabilities of reporting services. Just not uh, browsing it using these tables. Suppose I, I suppose I delete this. I've deleted this. I can uh, uh, let me use a chart. So the same data I want to browse, uh, for example, using a chart. And suppose I take a, this chart and and I will go to the data set, take total sales, put in my field here, and take employee name, put it in my category here, and so I have dropped the uh, total sales on my on my drop data fields here, and the category fields here. If I preview, this is the output that I get. So SQL Server reporting services will have wonderful charting capabilities also. And again, this data is coming in from the from the queue. So we have not talked about OLDP. We are not talking about PD SQL. We are only talking about extracting multi-dimensional data from the queue and displaying it, displaying it using tables, displaying it using charts. We have seen two techniques until now. We have seen Excel, and we have seen SQL Server reporting services. The next thing that I am going to show you is MDX. I'm through with reporting services, and the next thing I will show you is MDX. Now, MDX, multi-dimensional scripting, is, is definitely a beast. It's, it is indeed very complicated. Uh, they could be experts of MDX uh, worldwide, but MDX is complicated. It's not as easy as T-SQL, and there are a lot of things to learn in MDX. Uh, the, the first and foremost thing in understanding MDX is triples and sets. I'm not going to take you through these basics of triples and sets as of now. I have another detailed session coming up on MDX on Friday. Friday at 3 p.m. where I'm going to uh, teach you the basics of MDX. Uh, to many, to many uh, SQL uh, developers, uh, MDX is, uh, some people say it is like T-SQL, some say it is not like T-SQL. But depending on, depending on how you interpret MDX, you may say it's like T-SQL or you may say it's not like T-SQL. MDX does have those select clauses, it has the where clause, uh, the select statement, and Sometimes certain things are similar, but there are many other things that are very dissimilar to T-SQL. So let's see uh, some basic stuff in, uh, on how to write uh, uh, MDX. So uh, the database, the OLAP database is nw underscore sample and it is a cube, cube Northwind. I'm going to select this and I'm going to write a new query. And you can see some, some options here. You can see analysis services, MDX query, analysis services, DMX. DMX basically stands for data mining extensions. And you have XML A query, that is XML for analysis services. And what we are going to do is uh, analysis services MDX query. You need to connect, so I will connect using SQL Server authentication, uh, sorry, Windows authentication. Now, surprisingly, you have, uh, I have connected to AdventureWorks, but this is not the 
cube I want to count to. So I will click on new query. And now I have connected to cube not right? And I have the same sets of uh, measures and dimensions that are available. So let's write a MDX query. Give me a minute. So empty uh, statements will again start from the same select statement. So you write select. What do you want? So the first important thing to understand in uh, in MDX is that MDX has just like table has table has rows and columns. MDX has columns, rows, pages, uh, extends, and it can go up to 128 dimensions. I repeat, table has only rows and columns. So there are only two axes that we are talking about. Right, two axes, x and y, or zero or one. In MDX, you can have up to 128 axes, starting from zero to 127. What it means is, if I write select, I want to take total sales. I write select measures or take total sales on zero. This is the first axis, zero, from from my cube, cube not win. If I execute this, what you see in front of you now is the result set. I am seeing total sales from cube not one. Let me explain you this. So you will see a lot of syntactical prefixes here that you know these uh, the measures and the fields are all uh, enclosed in square brackets. This is compulsory. So you have you have taken total sales on zero. Zero basically means uh, it's the first fact. Either I can say zero or I can also say Column. Right? If I do this, I get the same out output. Or I can say access specify the index number. It all means the same. Either I can specify zero. Access zero or columns, all it all means the same. Now you you have written a very simple statement to just retrieve the total sales in cube not one. Let me uh, let me take up some uh, more items. Now, if I want to take year, so let me extract TBL time. And I will take E here, and so basically I'll put a comma here and extract here. Now I'm trying to retrieve two data items. One is total sales, and another is table time here on zero. Uh, do you think this this will execute? If I try to run, it will show me an error. It says the statement dialog could not be resolved due to ambiguity. The reason being because now I have Two dimensions. So basically, measures is also treated as a dimension item here. So if I, I have two dimensions, I have to enclose them in a in in brick. When I do this, it becomes a set. So as I as I as I was talking about in the PPT about uh, tuples and sets, I execute this, and you can see I'm getting. Total sales, and I'm getting all. All basically stands stands for all periods, right? All periods that is 96, 97, 98. If I want to see all the members of year, so I can use the members function year dot members. If I do that, now I will see total sales across 96, 97, 98 because all is the default member 
if I expand members, you can see all here. Yes, all is the default members. So if I don't specify members, it's always going to show me the default member that is all. And if I specify, it will show me all the members of of the year. Now, this uh, this was uh, this was again a very relatively simple MD script that we have written. Now we want to see all the employees on 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 the rows. So let modify this again. Select measures total sales uh, TBL time here on uh, members on zero. We put a comma, and you want to see the employee name. So specify employee name. Dot again members. Okay, let's see what's out without members. Okay, if I run this, okay, on this is going to be the access. I can specify on rows, or I can specify zero. Or I can specify access one. So let's run this. What you see, again see is total sales across 96, 97, 98 for all the employees. Why all again? Because all is always the the first and the default member all. And as I said, if I want to see all the employee names, I have to specify employee name dot members. On access one. If I execute this, here is the output. So your cross tab matrix report is is ready. This is just a very basic. There's a lot of things in MDX about filtering, about sorting, about grouping, summing up, and uh, there are the many more things. But this is this is relatively uh, a very straightforward MDX that we have written. We can also uh, we can also do something uh, to make it a little more appropriate. I will pull out the total sales from my column axis here. I will just specify TPL time members on zero. I I don't I basically don't need uh, to specify my measures total sales because total sales is my default measure. I don't need to specify it every time. So I have year on column, employee name on rows from cube north width, and it will automatically sh uh, show up the total sales. If I want to filter, I can write where measure dot total sales. If I if I want to, I can always give this, and I can give my filtering criteria, so on and so forth. Right. This was so. This is uh, these are the three uh, different techniques that we that we use to extract data from from the cube. There's another technique. You can always write code, uh, uh, program using admd.net to uh, extract data from from the cube. So my intention here was to give you uh, an, a basic overview of extracting data from the cube using Excel, using SQL Server reporting services and using MDX scripting. And uh, I personally um, uh, prefer MDX scripting because it is, it's very flexible, uh, yet it is a little difficult to understand in the beginning, but it's very flexible and very intuitive. And you have, uh, you have really advanced functionalities and functions with MDX scripting. And you can, the way you write these SQL scripts, you can write very, very powerful MDX scripts. And with this, I move on to show you a basic learning path which I have been using uh, quite often. All of you, many of you have already been working on DBMS and DSQL. In order to be, uh, in order to become a BI professional or start working on BI tools, you need to have good knowledge of data warehousing. Uh, MDX is something that I was trying to show you a little. Please attend my webcast on Friday where I will show you a great deal of MDX. SSAS we did on Monday. We did, we see a little bit of SSRS today. And we also saw Excel as a BI client. There are a lot of other uh, important tools like SharePoint, performance, uh, performance point server, data mining for you to learn. Many uh, follow up. I, uh, you may have many questions which I will answer now. But uh, if you have follow ups, uh, please join this forum, btogether.in. We have very good interaction going on there on all my webcast questions and answers. We are talking about SQL Azure. We are talking about the Azure platform. We are talking about uh, BI, SSAS, RS, 
and we'll have a lot more uh, discussions which will go on on forum vtogether.in. Please subscribe to my blog. I frequently write on SQL Server and BI. Uh, you can follow all my events and things that I'm doing, webcasts and content writing uh, and speaking at conferences. It will be all on my Twitter. You can visit my personal site and give me a feedback of this webcast. Right, and you can always connect to me using Facebook and LinkedIn also. I will upload this presentation in vtogether.in forum. So, um, many of you know, uh, and still want to remind you that I am doing a four-day course on SQL Server 2008 analysis services in seven cities across India. And this is a very comprehensive course that I am doing on business intelligence and analysis services. This is the first time uh, an event of such a scale and such a comprehensive course is being delivered in India and I'm covering uh, seven cities. If you are interested in attending this course, or if you want yourself to be nominated for this course by your company, do email me or, uh, or, or call up at this number and talk to my training uh, manager. You have all the details on this URL. Visit this URL and you will know more about this course. In Delhi, we are starting from November 23rd. Please give me a feedback about this uh, webcast. You can visit this URL or go to my personal site, amitbansal.net, and at the bottom of uh, the website, you have signed my guest book link. So please go and give me a feedback on how did you like the session. If you have suggestions, improvements, do suggest me there. And now it's time for question and answer session, and I'm ready to invite questions. So there's a question from Satya um, where you can see the presentation but you have uh, you can't see the videos. Uh, uh, Satya, uh, I am trying to investigate why you're not able to see the video in the recording, the demos. So just give me some time and I will I will try to get back to you. Yes, Ramu, the session was about uh, extracting data from the queue, and that's what we did. We, we, we used one of the techniques, uh, that is SSRS, to create reports, uh, which is actually uh, will be based on the queue. The session was not about creating reports, so I did not dive deep into creating reports as such. All that I was doing is one of the techniques of extracting data from the queue. Is Cube available in SQL Server 2005 and Visual Studio 2008 standard edition? Yes, all the functionalities of the Cube are uh, available in uh, 2005, in SQL Server 2005. There's a question from uh, Lakshman. Can you share the URL for the previous session? Uh, Lakshman, you can visit uh, you can visit my forum, vtogether.in. URLs are posted there. Or you can visit my personal site, amitbansal.net, and you will be able to see a resource section. If you click on the resource uh, link there, you will be able to see all the uh, all the resources, videos, presentations, and you can download them. This presentation will also be available as download from vtogether.net. Please let me know if you have more questions. So there is a question, which is the optimum way to extract data from the cube? XLS, uh, Excel, SSRS or MDX? Well, Abhishek, this is a good, good question, but the tool that you use to extract data from the queue will depend on your requirement. There is nothing uh, such as, uh, there is nothing called an optimum way as such because uh, whether you are using SSRS or whether you are using Excel, underlying what happens is MDX scripts are automatically being generated. So it depends on your requirement. For example, if CEOs and top level management, they want to browse the queue, obviously you will not expect them to write MDX scripts, correct? So probably they will use Excel or you will prepare reports for from uh, for them using MDX scripting. So it completely depends on requirement. <laughs> so 
So Thanda has a question. Uh, uh, business intelligence projects are not available in Visual Studio 2008 standard edition in my system. Uh, Sandra, the reason why business intelligence projects are not available in Visual Studio 2008 standard edition is maybe because you have SQL Server, do you have SQL Server 2008 installed on your system? Only if you have SQL Server installed will you be able to see these uh, these project items. Let me know. If you have more questions, uh, let me know. Okay, Abhishek has a question. Can we say in SSRS Excel 2007, can be the optimum way to extract data from the cube since the MD scripts are generated automatically, they can act better uh, way than the user written MD scripts? Okay. Um, well, uh, there is certainly no assurance here that SSRS or Excel would always generate optimum uh, queries, you know, underlying those designer tools. Uh, I will not vouch for that. As I said, uh, the requirement, uh, uh, basically choosing the right tool com is completely requirement based. It's completely requirement based. We do have to write our own MD scripts at times if we have to create reports or uh, if we have to uh, use AD or MD.net. If we have to build, uh, uh, if we have to use Excel, Excel is the only tool where we will not be required to uh, write MD scripts and we can just drag and drop the tool. But uh, I will certainly not try to say that SSRS or Excel becomes the optimum way because you don't have to write MDX scripts. In SSRS, you sometimes have to write MDX scripts also. In Excel, you don't have to. Thanks, Abhishek. Okay, Prabhakaran has a question. MDX is the scripting tool to extract the cube data and cannot be integrated with the application or can we integrate with the application like SSRS? So the, the question basically here is can you integrate MDX with SSRS or not? Uh, Prabhakaran, uh, as I said, when you are using a, a query builder or a query designer and you're tracking and dropping those measures and dimensions, uh, bottom line is under that tool, MD script is being automatically generated. What you can do is from the design mode, you can switch to another mode where you can write your own MDX script. So uh, MDX has a very tight integration with SSRS. So it is integrated with SSRS, if that answers your question. Uh, Abhishek, you have a question related to uh, multiple processes like ATL packages uh, and MDX scripts. I prefer to answer this question probably in the forum. Uh, this will not be the right place, Abhishek.
All right, thanks. Uh, I think we are through with all the questions. Uh, I thank you for your time, um, and I hope you enjoyed the webcast. Uh, the last webcast in this series is upcoming on uh, Friday, uh, 3 p.m., where I'm going to talk a little more uh, deep about MDX uh, scripting. Uh, that session is also going to be demo oriented. Uh, be there, and I look forward to uh, seeing you there. Post your feedback and join the forum we together dot uh, Two more questions. Okay. Yes, Abhishek, I will uh, upload the uh, uh, the recording URL in wetogether.in forum. Vasu has a question. Yes, Vasu, uh, most of the time, so the question is, do you really need to master MDX when you have tools like SSRS and Excel which can extract data from the queue? Basu, mastering MDX is always very good. I understand that those tools uh, can extract most of the data as you need, but sometimes writing complex MDX becomes a requirement. Uh, and drag and drop functionality will not solve the purpose. So at that point of time, you require, uh, you need to have good knowledge of MDX. However, with only basic knowledge of MDX, you can do your job well. Vivek has a question. Can we design reports only by learning Excel report uh, integration? Uh, Vivek, I, I fear I have not understood your question correctly. Can you rephrase your question, Vivek, please? Okay, so the, uh, Vivek, you have a question, creating reports without MD script. Yes, Vivek, you can create reports without writing uh, MD script as I showed you in Excel and as I showed you in SSRS. But as I said, sometimes uh, uh, if you have to do a lot of filtering and sorting uh, based on the, uh, different dimensions, because dimensions have hierarchies, then you have parent dimension, child dimension. Things get a little complex. At that point of time, these uh, drag and drop functionalities sometimes do not work, and then you have to, uh, you need to know how to write complex MD. Those, those are certain scenarios where you will write this thing. So I see that some of you are trying to run away from MDX. My suggestion to you is don't try to run away from MDX, try to learn it. Please pardon the interruption. Your conference contains less than three participants at this time. If you would like to continue, press star one now, or the conference will be terminated. Ooh, Abhishek, you have a question. Can you explain architecture of MDX query execution architecture? Yes, Abhishek, uh, I can certainly explain the architecture of MDX query execution, and I can do it very well, but <laughs> this webcast uh, is not the right place. Uh, I suggest you, you should attend uh, my course, uh, core day course on SQL Server 2008 Analysis Services, where I am going to discuss the MDX querying architecture, because it's going to take considerable amount of time and probably would require at least one more webcast. No, uh, no Abhishek, I will not be covering uh, querying uh, architecture on Friday, because uh, that's, that's, that's level 400. What I will be covering on Friday will be level 100 and 200. That's the basics of uh, MDX scripting. I'm not going to go into deep and advanced MDX scripting. I think uh, it's time for me to go and uh, I have no more questions. Yes, okay, I will take care of the video. Uh, give me some time. Thank you, all of you. Uh, thanks, thanks, Abhishek. Thank you, all of you, for your wonderful questions. I uh, look forward to seeing you again on Friday. Please be a member of uh, the forum, be together.in, and uh, post your feedback on amitbhagatul.net. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.